Now I'm going to uh, use as example a weather application that I just created. It's kind of cheesy, kind of dinky little application, uh, but it uses the Open Weather Map API. Just give you a short demo of this application. Uh, you load up the page, um, and it shows you the current weather conditions in Atlanta. Uh, you can select other cities from this list on the left here, and that will show you the weather conditions in those other cities. And it may or may not change the background color depending on the weather conditions in that location. So that's the application. And this is what it looks like in the network tools when you initially load the page. There's a bunch of XHR requests over here. And it looks like based on the query parameter is making requests to a, a lot of different cities. Now I want to introduce you to the filter panel. So given that there's a, a many requests being issued on this page, uh, and I've seen some applications that have far more than this number. The, the number, by the way, is 16 requests. I have seen some applications that have over 200 requests. When you have that many requests, uh, it would be helpful to you to be able to filter those requests down to a manageable level for you to view. So that's what this filter panel is for. Uh, the first thing you can do with it is to filter the requests by the URL path. So you can click in this text box here, type in a substring, and it'll filter this list down to only the requests that have that. In this case, I put weather here, so only the URLs that contain the word weather in it. And this ping also shows up. That's because it goes to the openweathermap.org host. Uh, you can optionally use regular expressions. Um, another way to filter down this list to a manageable level is by type. So all these uh, types are, these are, I think it's, this is a toggle button. So you can, uh, the one we are most interested in is XHR. So you can click on XHR and it, it, it shows that it's selected currently. It's only going to show you the Ajax requests that has, has been issued by this page. Okay, so that's, that's the filter panel. Now we're gonna talk about drill down. So you can click on any one of these requests to get additional detailed information about that particular request. So when you click on one of the items, you get this uh, detail panels. And there are actually five tabs. We're going to talk about four of them. The first one being headers. So headers will show you the URL, the request method, whether it's get or post, uh, the response status code, in this case 200, OK. It will also display all the response headers as well as uh, all the request headers. Uh, and in fact, if you your request has query parameters or parameters in the request body for post requests or put requests, that will also show up down here. Although right now, this, this particular request doesn't have that. The second tab is the preview tab. Uh, you, for certain data types, uh, this preview tab gives you a nice visual representation of the response body. And the third tab is the response body itself. So in this case, we have a JSON representation of an array of city names in it. And with the preview tab, you can see that in a sort of expandable, collapsible representation of this array. Whereas with in the response tab, you get to see the original JSON encoding. I'm going to skip over cookies um, and we're going to look at timing. The timing tab is actually, this, you see the same information that you would get if you had hovered over one of the bars in that waterfall Gantt chart. This is the same thing that you would see. You get to see how much time within this request was spent uh, in the queuing stage, in the stalled stage, in the uh, 
stage of waiting for the bits to come back and in the stage of actually downloading the content. Okay, so that, that's the detailed information that you can get from a request. Now we're going to look at some more things you can do with it. So when you're debugging, it's actually very helpful to be able to kind of reproduce this request in some Wix. So that's what we can do using the copy functionality. If you right click on one of these requests, you can select copy and there are various ways to copy this request. You can copy it by the link address. That just means it'll put the URL of this request in your clipboard um, so that you could use it, uh, you can paste it into a browser address bar and, and then issue a re request that way. Uh, but there's actually a shorthand for you to do that. If you select the open in new tab menu item, then it will actually do that step for you. So it'll take the URL for this request, open a new tab in your browser and then load that URL. And then you can see the JSON response here. This open in new tab is great for get requests, but usually it won't work with post or put or other types of HTTP methods because those have request bodies that encode some data. And there's no way to put that information in the address bar. So for those kinds of requests, what you want to do is you can copy a curl command using the copy as curl menu item, and which you can then paste right into your terminal. And then that curl command will uh, simulate this exact request being issued. So I'm gonna do that right now. So if I had done that, set copy, copy as curl for this particular cities.json request here, and then went into my terminal and pasted it, it would look like this. And then I hit enter, it'll actually reissue that exact same request that the browser had made verbatim because this command actually encodes all of the request headers on this command line. Um, so everything is verbatim to exactly what Chrome actually did. And it will also even work when authentication is required by the backend because that authentication information, whether you have, if you have some sort of authentication token that will be encoded in here either in the HTTP headers or in a request parameter. Um, another way to do the same thing, if you all you want to do is replay that exact same request, is just select replay XHR. And if you did that, you'll see a new duplicate request, which is, again, verbatim to the previous one that was issued. Now you try. Again, I would like you to pause this video to do this. Um, and only restart the video after you have done this. So what I want you to do is open up a new website or a web application of your choice. I would like you to load the page, look at all the request responses. In some cases, you might need to navigate inside the app to get some of the requests to be issued, and that's fine. Um, I would like you to use the filter panel to filter it down to only the requests that you care about. Um, I, I like you to select specific requests to inspect its details, uh, including the headers tab, the preview tab, response tab, and the timing tab. And then I like you to reissue some requests by either copying its URL and pasting it in a browser or copying the curl command line, which you then use run execute in the in your terminal, or by replaying the request. Basically, all any one of those methods that I have shown you. Okay, ready? Go. Now I want to talk about errors. So um, to induce an error, I'm going to introduce a bogus city name in my cities.json response. Uh, in my application. So once I do that and I try to reload the app, I get this error. For requests that have an error, have an error code, which is either an error code in the 400 range or in the 500 range, 
it will show up red. And you can also see the status code for the error. This case is a 404. Another way you can see errors, see uh, Ajax request errors or request errors of all sorts really, you will see them in the console. If you're deep troubleshooting your app and you happen to be looking at your console rather than the network tab, you will see that error come out in the console and it'll show you some basic information about the request. You can click on this URL that has has been underlined. You can click on it and which will switch you to the network panel and you'll see something like this. And the row that re corresponds to this request you have clicked on will momentarily light up a little bit. And at this point, usually what you wanna do is click on it to drill down to see the detailed information about it. Um, and this one, you can see the curved parameters that has been sent over for this request. And you can see that the Q parameter has the dot, dot, dot in there. If you switch to the response tab, uh, you, you can see that the backend has returned an error message saying CD not found. So for this error is very understandable. The, the, the query was dot, 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 and the backend couldn't find a CD by that name. Um, let's just for the heck of it, we're gonna copy this request as a curl command and then execute it in the terminal. So this is the the what the command looks like. We had enter and run it, and we see that we got that exact same message, uh, CD not found. Um, just pretend that once you ran this command, you're looking at this command and you recognize that, oh, the queue has an invalid CD name, that must be the problem. What you could do is go back and edit this command. Does this make the queue be an actual valid CD like Phoenix? And then and hit enter, and now you could get good data. And getting that good data tells you that the value passed to that kill parameter is indeed the cause of the problem. And now you know how to fix the app. Okay, so that was errors. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about XHR uh, or Ajax breakpoint. This is a very useful technique if you don't know and you wanna find out what line of code initiated a particular request. So back to our weather app. Um, if you look, uh, and this is gonna be not in the network panel anymore, but rather in the sources panel, which, which you might be familiar with it if you're used to working in the debugger. Okay, so in the sources panel, we got, we got three sort of panes. Got the sources pane containing the tree of source code. And then we got the actual source code pane, which contains the source code to whichever is the selected file. And then we got this right pane over here, which contains an assortment of stuff. The one we're particularly interested in is the XHR breakpoint. To use this, we actually need a substring pattern to filter the requests on. So we're gonna go back to the network panel to figure that out. So let's say I wanna inspect the weather requests. So I type in weather as the substring to filter on and that gets us all the weather requests that are also XHRs. If I like what I see here, I'm gonna use this substring as the pattern to filter on. So I'm gonna expand the XHR breakpoints panel and click on this plus sign in order to add an XHR breakpoint. When I do that, it'll ask me for the string pattern to match on. I'm gonna put weather. So if I put weather, it'll basically stop the program whenever a new XHR request is issued that goes to a URL that contains weather in it. So I'll do that, and then I will in induce the uh, desired request again. In my case, I just have to reload the page. So once I reload the page, I see that the debugger has paused on this line. Now, this line of code is in jQuery source, and it may seem intimidating to be dropped into jQuery source code, but actually you can pr 
pretty easily relate this to the application code that we're working with by looking down in the call stack. So the call stack is basically um, a series of function calls where function A calls function B and then function B calls function C, function C calls function D and so, so on. The root function call was the one at the bottom. So this is a big chain of function calls. We're less concerned about jQuery source code than ours. And our code is app.js. So the highest frame in the call stack that belongs to our code is the one that we want to look at. So once you find that, you want to click on that. There. And this is the line of code that issues that request. And it's using $get to issue that AJAX request. And also because we're in the context of uh, a debugger session right now, we can actually reference and examine the value of various variables in this program right now. So an example is the city variable. And actually there's this peach colored label that shows us that this parameter city, its value currently is Atlanta. So right now we're getting the weather for Atlanta using this request. Try to induce an error. You can do that by changing the front end or changing the back end code, or even copying out a curl command and changing the, the curl command. Then after that, try testing out setting an XHR breakpoint and then inducing a request that triggers that breakpoint and seeing the program pause.